topic how important it is to build relationships when selling. Relationship building we are seeing is something that we need to do. It's not a want anymore. Since the competition in terms of coaches, trainers, those who are selling items globally, it's something that we have to embrace. We want to stand out from the crowd. No market is saturated. It's just that what you could bring to the table differently. And if that can happen, then after you will be gaining all the opportunities that you deserve because what it is that you sow is what it is that you reap. So my co-host today, Rushi, in terms of what it is that you are sowing that you should reap in essence. Yeah, I, I agree, uh, Antonio, with you, because even if the market is saturated, but still we all are unique and we have our own unique, uh, you know, offerings, a unique personality. So once we start creating personalized relationships with our clients, we can actually, uh, you know, create a very strong client base. And as there's a common saying, uh, people buy from people. So Social. it's not. Yeah. So it's not the brand only it's the it's us who create the brand so when people know us they need they know our uh, you know uh, specialities they are they, they know what we can offer on the table then it becomes uh, more easier and that's what i'm trying to do i'm through my content i'm trying to share more and more value with my uh, audience with my clients and it's it's not like always a, a short transactional journey it is more of a relationship relationship which runs for uh, you know years not just months which ru which runs for years that's what i'm trying to create in my own journey and so far i must compliment you you are doing an awesome job thank and you so much you are doing you a are great job <laughs> thank you yeah. and yeah. it's all about positioning yourself in the marketplace so for example mm -hmm. let's say you are targeting c level executives and it have a particular audio event or LinkedIn Live event where they are talking about how C-level executives could propel their business or propel their career going forward. That is an event that you want to go to because in that event, you will see C-level executives who will be the attendees and you could essentially network with them. So you want to essentially, as I mentioned, position yourself in the marketplace to the ideal customer profile of individuals that you are trying to target. And if it is that you go about doing it in such way, then you will see the progression and everything will fall in nicely. I think that a lot of persons problem is that they don't know who they're targeting. They don't know what is unqualified to qualified leads and they're not positioning themselves in the right place. And then a the next thing also as well to go a bit further, your outreach messaging. It's not supposed to be salesy, but it's supposed to be personalized. We know that it have so many automation tools presently in the market, and sometimes you may send a message and someone could decipher if that is a personalized or an automated message. So you really want to take your time, engage in someone's content, show them that you appreciate it in terms Absolutely. of the content that they provide, and then maybe send them a message, a personalized message, you know, actually saying something about what they do you know research their profile so that when it is you send that message you know exactly what they do and you could put some information in the message itself so it be more personalized that is the whole approach to take away the automation aspect of it and be more personalized so that you could build that genuine relationship as you mentioned Ruchi, so that could last for years not just for days not just for a sale and that's it so it's all about the follow up in the sales i utilize the other word checking in because following up is something that's cliche checking in or i am recircling um back to you concerning a service that you wanted or a product that i think may be beneficial so in terms of our language as well all that we have to incorporate into a different cycle it's all about not just sales but it's about really personalizing your messaging and connecting with those individuals who you consider as your ideal customer profile. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those CLC pitches uh, don't work 
anymore. And uh, the moment you offer that to the client, they know what your intentions are. But when mm -hmm. uh, you are offering value every day, every uh, time you post on, uh, you know, different social media pages. And when you offer value that talks volumes about uh, your ethics and about uh, that you are here for a long term, you are not just here to sell a particular product. So I think that uh, works very well at this uh, time. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And um, I am inviting Chris to our live stream Great. Chris would like to join. So no problem, mm -hmm. Chris. Um, just now. Yes. Yeah, so this will be a great discussion because Chris always come with nuggets of information. Um, okay. Yes. He's actually looking for a link. Yeah, I, Chris, I sent you the link in your LinkedIn inbox, so you can check it there. Right, let me see. Yeah, so going back to the topic, relationship building. Um, especially utilizing this entity, which is separate from LinkedIn. So some people may have the misinterpretation, Ruchi, that the sales navigator and LinkedIn is the same, but it's like a third party, it integrates into each other. And if you really want to build that ideal customer profile of individuals by territory, by demographic, by persona. Um, that is the best platform that you could possibly utilize, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, Chris, what's up, what's up? Well, Hi, good Chris. morning, Antonio, and how are you doing, Rishu? How are you doing today? I am great on yourself. Oh, it is Super Saturday. It's another great day to be alive and another gift, not only to receive, but to give as well. Ah, I love that. What you guys are sharing really speaks to me, and here's why. I truly believe the one thing that interconnects us all is our very humanity. And once we tap into that very humanity, what can we not achieve and do not only in our lives, but in the lives of others? Just like what you said, Wushi, when you said about <clears throat> the dynamic of value. Mm. I truly believe the next currency of humanity is going to be rooted in value, not money. And when mm. people really see mm -hmm. that for what it really is, that builds literally interest in and of itself in the dynamic of interconnectivity. When you actually add value to people and saying, hey, what really matters most to you in your life? What really gets you up out of bed and say, hey, I'm not going to be working for people. I'm going to be working with people. And when you mm -hmm. do that in a way that creates an environment, not only a one that you love, but also the one mm -hmm. that they love, that just might turn into the life that they love if you allow that to occur. Mm -hmm. Love that. And that is the idea. And I actually see companies partnering with individuals right now, professionals, so that they could propel the business. And it is not about you working for myself, but it's about both of us working together and we growing together. So if it is that you really want to grow as an individual, in terms of entrepreneurship, it's always that opportunity to partner with someone you should be looking for and not working for someone. Yes, we know we have to start off somewhere. So we have to work for an organization, understand the operations, the functionality of the organization, and then now the idea is supposed to be in terms of redeployment so that you now could have a great workforce where you could limit the unemployment of the individuals all over. So. If it is that we have this mentality and we implement it, then after a lot of states, a lot of countries could have a low unemployment rate. Mm -hmm. well, well, think about this, Antonio, and, and I truly believe this is the better question that we should not only ask of ourselves, but of each other. Let me ask both of you this. Is the better question to ask what you do, what you do, what you do, or is it the better question to ask is who are you? Hmm. I will leave you to answer that, Rishi. <laughs> no, that that that's true. Yeah, I mean, who are you, and what you can help with? You know, what mm -hmm. is the specific problem you can actually help with? Because if we are just always, uh, you know, bragging about our uh, specialities and what we can do and everything, that's nobody cares. What people actually care about is 
what you can help me with can you solve mm -hmm. this typical problem uh, what i am facing at the moment so i think that personal touch when come into your pitch which is a pitch but it's not salesy it shouldn't be salesy but it should be a personalized pitch where you uh, are helping people capturing a specific problem addressing a specific problem that's where you are creating a relationship and okay. i i want <laughs> Well, well, think about this, Rishi, as you were just sharing now about the personal touch dynamic, and I really love that. When you think about this, it really sparks in my mind this very quote from Star Wars that's changed my life like you'll never know. Think about this. To embrace others for their differences for that which makes you whole. I'll say that again. To mm -hmm. embrace others for their differences for that which makes you whole. That goes right into personal touch and connectivity. It's there. But do we actually recognize it for what that opportunity presents itself as? Because if we don't really listen to that and really see it for what it is, we will lose that connectivity and you lose that touch. Because then again, it won't get us to a place of connection that that connection will turn into collaboration. And then that won't even turn into community in and of itself. Mm -hmm. mm, love that. Right now I'm reading a book by Daniel Coleman, Emotional Intelligence. And I think that leaders of organizations, sales managers, C-level executives, they need that emotional intelligence because it's all about understanding someone that empathy and despite that you may be someone who is results oriented and you always get great results but if it is no you're not really trying to understand an individual and work with them because some people they have issues they may have personal issues and that may affect their work performance but that don't mean that they are a bad person it's just that we are human beings and we go through stuff so that emotional intelligence is something that we really need to develop because it's not something that not everyone has especially if it is that in your childhood days you was basically traumatized whether it be by rape by bullying and all these different things you may end up grow up as an adult doing that same thing towards others because you got a position and you just decide that you know someone did you that so you could in return do someone that so i think that emotional intelligence is something that's supposed to be displayed in organization um on a regular basis check up on leaders not just the subordinates to understand how their thinking capacity is at if they have any issues because yes they are the leaders but they are human beings as well they make mistakes mm -hmm. and we shouldn't just leave them alone but look at the lower staff and think that they are the problem then after it can be management and most time as management is the issue because it starts from the top and then click along to the bottom yeah. it starts from the top yeah, yeah. But i think the middle middle management also uh, gets uh, punished for that because everyone yes. feels that they are the ones who are the culprits but it's always <laughs> you know <it's> <laughs> Because top management is like, you know, hidden. They are talking to very uh, few people, few professionals in the corporate, and then the middle management always uh, suffers. But yes, yeah. it comes from the top. And uh, it's still missing, unfortunately. In our country, I see a lot of cases happening where, you know, they don't care about anything except the KPI and performance and everything. But yeah, it's 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 it's, it's improving, but the, the progress is very slow, I would slow. say. Well, well, yeah. well, I dare to propose this idea, and really it's a, literally a state of being when we really think about it. What if it doesn't have to come from the top? What if it actually come from every single person on that team, from every mm. single member of it? Because think about it. I truly believe we see in Antonio, we're meant to evolve into a new way of leading and a new way of being. <clears throat> because maybe leadership is going to be uniquely different to each and every single one of us. And once we embrace those different places of leadership, I truly believe leadership can not only create more leaders in context, but also to create more followers in context. Because mm. again, if you are willing to really let go of your position or the authority or whatever that might be, it's like what John C. Maxwell says in his great book, The 21 Info Watch of Leadership. Leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. It's not mm. a title, it's not a rank, it's not even a position. It's influence. It's how we show up to that influence that will dictate which way people will go. Will they run from the high hills from you and say, I'm not going to be a part of this because this is not even for me because you don't really see me for who I am. Or mm -hmm. you actually will follow them, not because of the money that they give you, 
but because you believe in what they believe and even see what they see. Because, again, at the end of the day, not only are they allowing that to occur in their lives from a place of leadership, but you also are allowing that to occur in your own life because you want to really do that in a way to where the very act of giving is in the very act of receiving. Hmm. Love that. That is so true. Leadership is influenced. So it's either if it is that you go in with my leadership or you're not going with my leadership. My leadership could be negative. It could be positive. I could be leading you in a great way, but then you take it negatively and think that I am pressuring you or you could take it in another way. So it's something that I think what we have to do is really try to understand persons a bit more because yes, you have to do your job, um, but that's where the empathy comes in and emotional intelligence as I was speaking about. Yeah, and I'm glad you brought the emotional uh, dynamic into this when it comes to emotional intelligence. What about this? And think about this. What if EQ and IQ equals you? Hmm. I'll say that again. What if EQ and IQ equals you? <laughs> I I'm a bit lost. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> well, see, see, that that's the thing about it. When we really hear something new, we don't know what to say to it. But maybe so when true. we actually take a step back and really see what is there, like when it comes to an opportunity, like what Sir Richard Branson said many years ago, and it's really relevant to this saving conversation today, is when someone offers you an amazing opportunity, you're not sure how to do it. Say yes and learn how to do it later. Yes. And then when yes. you do that, the next thing you know, you're going to step into a much larger world because, again, at the end of the day, you're allowing that to occur because you want the life, you want to have life happen for you and not to you. Hmm. So true. And that is where you embrace change because some people will say that I'm comfortable, I am in a job, and I'm earning so much at the end of the year and that's that but no if it is you really want to grow if you really want the best life for yourself and think selfless even for your kids and their next generation you will embrace change so as richard branson said if an opportunity comes to you what you will do is say yes if it is you cannot do it and when it is you start it somehow you will find your way in that how people become entrepreneurs. They have an idea. They may not know how to go about doing it, but they just start. And as you start, you get to find your way in, just like someone who may go into the ocean and they don't know how to swim. Eventually, they will have to swim up to shore because they don't want to drown. You know, So it's something that we really have to embrace. Embrace change and don't just settle for being comfortable always try to be the best version of you so i gotta ask both of you and th this is what we talked about on uh, one of our linkedin lives and also linkedin audio calls is maybe ask ourselves this question what does leadership look like and mean to you hmm great question <laughs> to me, leadership is where I really showing someone how the task supposed to be done because I realize it have leaders will tell you what to do, but if it is that they were to do it for themselves, they don't know how to go about it. So when you've been a leader, you should always show someone, for example, let's say I'm in sales and I tell any sales professionals to go out on trade and obtain this amount of sales. I will go with them and show them that the quota that I'm telling you to make, I can make that and show them how it can be done. And with that, now they get inspiration and they could even achieve that. And if by some reason, they, not everybody could adapt to a changing environment. Not everybody will learn as quickly as someone else. So if I see out of 10 sales reps, about two or three is lagging behind. 
I will give more emphasis towards them because I know that maybe the learning curve is not as great as the others. So that is where you now you have to really have that empathy. And then in terms of their personal life issues, you have to realize that everybody is human beings. And even self if it is that, let's say they go through a divorce and they need some time more from work, you cannot penalize the worker for that. You have to work with them and try to even provide counseling. If that's not your expertise, ask higher management if they could provide some counseling to that individual because that person could be the top sales person in the company and you don't want them to be able to like leave the company because of that issue you want to work with them let them overcome that issue and then after they could come back to being the top sales professional so that's my way of leadership yeah i i agree yeah. and someone who nurtures you uh, you know uh, not just tell you what to do but to show you mm -hmm. the practical examples of how they can do it because i'm myself a coach and i have been coaching individuals where i show them the path what exactly i have done because a leader has also walked that path you know like he has also walked through that uh, journey so mm -hmm. if you can show what exactly how exactly you did it and how you overcome that struggle that issue then i think you are uh, actually uh, transforming them and you know showing them the path but many a times i see bosses and who are not really leaders they just tell you to do something in a mm -hmm. in a timeline but they don't tell you how to do it how to Correct. In a, because they themselves don't know how to do it you know, so care, yeah. the inspiration is so important. If it is that you see a leader doing exactly what they tell you to do, you will get, you will be so inspired that you will yeah. maybe do even yeah. better than them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically yeah. simplifying it for them, not yeah. complicating, yeah. simplifying the process as, as much as they can. Yeah. Right. Well, I just love what Bob just shared there. And he said, leaders provide the vision and tools for their colleagues to be successful. But Bob, I'm going to ask you this. Is leadership about you or is it about them? About them. Of course, it's about <laughs> them. And here's why. Most often than not, when we get in a place of leadership, we want to be the ones who know it all or have all the the answers to those problems that every comes that everyone's way, whether it be on a leader's team or their their managers or whatever the case may be maybe when we really see that it's a new way to lead of course and a new way to be and it comes right back to this very question that's at hand how important is it to build relationships today i truly believe leadership and relational uh ships are really down from the foundation not from the transactional but to the relational because when we get truly mm. connected on a deep and meaningful human level that relationship is going to be built upon the things that I call them like the universal truths of humanity. We all want to be heard. We all want to be loved. We all want to be appreciated. We all want to be a part of something about uh, bigger than ourselves. And Bob just said it. It's always about them. That is great. Collaboration is critical. See, Bob, I'm going to tell you this. What we believe here at Bringing Humanity Together is about connection that will lead into collaboration, and that collaboration will lead into community. And when we literally see that for what it is, Bob, it's going to change the dynamic of not only how humanity is viewed in the workplace today, but literally how we can develop people on a deep and meaningful human skill like never before seen in human history. Because, again, at the end of the day, if I am a leader, it's not about me. It's about Antonio. It's about Bob. Mm -hmm. It's about Susie. It's about whoever else that that is there in our team whether to be in a workplace or not, because think about it. Let me ask you this. Is the same community that we live in is the same one that we work in? Hmm. No, it's not. So different. <laughs> no, no, it's they're different. one and the same, and here's why. Because think about yeah. it. Like I said in that very quote, to embrace each other for their differences for that which makes you whole, the very same people that you live with, most often than not, will be the ones that you work with. Think about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even though there are diverse cultures in every organization on this planet, they come from the same communities, whether we realize it or not. They're already there. But see, we don't embrace that yeah. from an organizational dynamic. We really don't. 
because we want people to conform and say, this is the way you must do that. We put people in that proverbial box and say, you must do this. But what if there was another mm-hmm. way to look at it, another mm-hmm. way to be and another way to lead that we can do that from the place that it is about relationship. It is about collaboration, but still mm-hmm. embrace their differences for that, which makes them not only whole, but makes you whole. Absolutely. I would say um, the problem, Chris, with a lot of companies is that they think that they own you for 40 hours per week and whatever it is that they say goes. And sometimes they are the ones who actually bring down the company and they may say that it's your fault because you are not maybe selling enough, but you have to really embrace change and listen to your workers because if it is that they are the ones who on the ground level going to various customers getting insights market research and development they are the ones who will be more attuned to information from the persons who looking to buy into your business and you have to sell items or sell services that what your prospects will want you just can't sell them things that they you think will be beneficial to them so it's all about them and the information from them will be beneficial to go to management so that they now could be able to assess that and see how well that they could serve the customer. Well, let me ask you this, Antonio, and I'm glad you brought that up. Think about this. And Bob, I would love to have a great and engaging conversation with you. And I like Rishi too as well. I'd like to have a great and engaging conversation uh, with you as well. But think about this. What if this could be possible that we actually don't put out a product and service first to gain that following, maybe it's about really listening to the heartbeat of humanity and finding out first and foremost, what does humanity really need and want in their lives? Because we can put out a product and service all day long, but if it's not for them, then why even put it out there? Maybe it's about really recognizing what people actually want. Does anyone go out there and say, hey, I may have the next new iPhone, but I'm not going to build it because maybe what I'm doing is going to be totally in reverse of what most traditional businesses will do to where I want to build out the following now and get people to be a part of it from the very inception. Because then when you build that, next thing you know that you're uh, literally not only have the no like and trust factor already out of the way, but then again, at the end of the day, and Bob, I just like what you just said there, it says to sell, you need to solve their problem. And what is their pain point? Absolutely. But think about this, Bob. What if the best sale that we can ever do in life or even in business is the one we never have to do? Hmm. Thought provoking. And that way... Research and development comes into the play before the actual product launches. You have to know what it is that your potential customers want or need, and then you provide that. So like, for example, I would say Elon Musk, he maybe understand what it is that should be different in the car industry. And he didn't do any marketing. He just designed a product that is so awesome and he just invent something totally new so he worked on more engineering and development than to actually spend money into the marketing so that product market itself and he was successful and up to this day still successful and, and i'm glad you brought elon musk into the mix because see what he's done with tesla and also spacex too as well is he had a vision that he wanted to do something different and here's why. Yeah. Yeah. When, when, when you do do a, a regular buying of a car, what you have to do is you have to go to a dealership, and dealership has different parameters and that kind of thing in, in and of itself. But when you walk into a dealership, what's the one word do you always hear from every single person? You're going into a showroom. Well, see, Elon Musk doesn't have dealerships. He has showrooms. And see, mm. the reason why he has that and he has a big following as he has is he doesn't have the regular status quo model of what traditional ways cars are being sold each and every single day. He has showrooms. Why is that? It's just like, how did Apple become Apple? May it started as a computer company, 
but it's turned and morphed into something bigger because they knew their why and everything mm. like that. And then once you know your why, and again, want people to see what you see and even believe, and then in turn, when you see what they see and believe, and you kind of put that together, you have a true great recipe, not only of success, but of true in interconnectedness that will grow opportunities in numbers, grow potential in numbers, grow uh, connection in numbers, and then next thing you know, the growth potential and thriving potential will literally go off the charts because you're living the, leaving the literal status quo behind because you're not doing things in the cookie cutter approach of what we've led to believe that that's that's the way we got to do it. What if there was mm -hmm. a multiple path to success? What if there was a multiple path to leadership? There is. It's just what we've been programmed in our head. That's the way we have to do it. And see, it to me, and what we all believe here at Bringing Humanity Together, there are different ways to do that. Because if there was that one singular way, we all be doing it right here, right now. Hmm. So true. That is something really um, interesting to know that he didn't have any dealerships, only showrooms. People love a new experience. And in terms of traditional way of thinking, and we have to evolve. And by evolving, you need to change the way how everything is being done. Business, marketing, the sales mm -hmm. approach, everything. You know, so Rushi, I know that you... Um, have something to do so if it is anything you would like to say in closing um you know chris you made some valid points i would like to say thank you very much for coming on our show i'm so today. humbled and honored about and, this opportunity antonio and i like i said we she i would like to have a great and engaging conversation with you and as well as bob so thank you for this opportunity i greatly you. appreciate it thank you are most welcome so anything that you would like to say Rushi, in closing before we end today's life I think I would just say that uh, it was a great conversation and uh, what we really discussed about, you know, personalizing and how we can actually engage and help and address the pain points. I think that's that's it's all about yeah. and uh, avoid salesy pitches, avoid selling business and having transactional uh, uh, you know, communications. More than that, we need to create a community a community where we help each other and uh, everything will follow. Love it. Love it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I, it. I can't wait to speak with you, Rishi. You're just hitting home runs left and right. And I, like I said, <laughs> that's the reason why I came on because I truly believe once we get engaged with one another, we can get to mm -hmm. a point that we really can connect and say the things that makes us different. is not the things that sets us apart when they really that's think about it at the end of the day. It's the thing that really unites us because we're allowing that to occur. Mm -hmm. Whoa, so true. Great Absolutely. insights. Great insights. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So it was nice. This conversation was great. We can do it twice. <laughs> um I wish everyone who is watching the replay a great rest of the evening. Those on the replay type team, hashtag team replay, so we know that's you. Yes, and see us again every Saturday, 4 to 30 p.m. IST and 70 a.m. EST. Thank you.